on behalf of SBA Cap Securities, I would like to thank the management of Jet Airways for giving us this opportunity to host the call. To discuss the quarterly results, we have with us the senior management of Jet Airways, represented by Mr. Vinay Dubey, CEO, Mr. Amit Agarwal, CFO and Deputy CEO, Mr. Gaurang Shetty, Whole Time Director, Mr. Mannings, AVP Commercial, and Mr. N. Ravichandran, SVP Finance. With this brief introduction, I, I would like to hand over the call to the management to take this discussion forward. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thanks, Santosh. Um, hi, good afternoon to all of you. My name is Ravi Chandran, and before we begin today's call, I wish to state that certain statements made during this call related to our future business, financial performance, and future events or developments may be construed as forward-looking statements, which involve a number of risks and uncertainties that could cause actual results to differ materially from those in such forward-looking statements. I wish to inform you all that the numbers reported in our uh, yesterday's declared results are in total compliance with the provisions of in AS. Let me now hand over the call to our CEO, Mr. Vinay Dubey. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Ravi. I am pleased to extend a very warm welcome to all of you for this earnings call organized by SBI CAP. I am grateful to all of you for your time and the interest that you have shown in our company. It's a pleasure to be here with my team. I'm accompanied by Gaurang Shetty, Whole Time Director, Amit Agarwal, CFO and Deputy CEO, Raj Sivakumar, SVP Worldwide Sales and Distribution, and N. Ravi Chandran, SVP Finance. Uh, before we get to the discussion uh, on our results for the first quarter of FY19, I think it's important that I address several speculative news items that have been circulating about Jet Airways in the recent past in various sections of the media. To begin with, let me please clarify that the deferment of our quarterly results was due solely to the additional time requested by the management of Jet Airways of its audit committee in order to complete its accounts and to close on matters relating to cost reduction initiatives and turnaround plans. The audit committee subsequently granted us this extra time. I would like to make it very clear that there are no differences of opinion whatsoever between the company and its statutory auditors and that both BSR and company, a KPMG affiliate and DTS and associates continue to be the statutory auditors of the company. As announced, Jet Airways is a going concern and the matter of emphasis in the auditor's report on our financial statements has appeared for a few years. So any mention of our auditors raising going concern issues from March 2018 or in this quarter is incorrect. Our auditors have issued an unmodified opinion on the results. There have also been incorrect media reports about Mr. Vishwanathan, one of our independent directors and chair of the audit committee, resigning. This is also not true. Mr. Vishwanathan was appointed as an independent director by our shareholders in 2015. He was also appointed as chairman of the audit committee. The term of his directorship ended at the annual general meeting held on 9th August 2018, and hence he retired by rotation. In the same meeting, the shareholders of the company also appointed another independent director, and this appointment was part of the agenda circulated ahead of time for the company's annual general meeting. Allow me also, please, to clarify that all our accounts with lenders are standard, and there is no overdue in any of our accounts. There have been no delays in discharging any of our loan obligations to any of the lenders. In fact, our bankers have issued certificates to this effect at periodic intervals. And finally, the last clarification I would like to make is in relationship to our employees. As you all know, the Indian aviation sector is growing very rapidly, and Jet Airways' firm orders of 225 Boeing 737 MAX fuel-efficient aircraft is a testimony to the airline's growth ambitions. This fiscal year alone, Jet Airways will induct 11 new Boeing 737 MAX aircraft. Three of these 11 have already been delivered, with two more expected next month. The airline's stated growth target of an 8 to 10 percent CAGR over the next five years will require more people and not less. As such, any media reports of broad layoffs are completely false. I would now like to turn our attention to the broader aviation landscape and Jet's quarterly performance. 
The Indian aviation sector, although witnessing a steady and robust traffic growth, has been passing through a tough phase. Brent rates have gone up by more than 150% from their lowest levels two and a half years ago. In the last year, the rupee has also depreciated by about 5%. Airlines have been unable to pass through this increased cost to consumers by increasing fares. The lag between the increase in fuel costs and fares must get corrected over time. The industry cannot sustain such low fares in the long run. But as we've said before, we're not waiting idly and are actively engaged at looking at various debt reduction and funding options, including infusion of capital, monetization of assets, including the company's stake in its loyalty program. Since these matters are at a working stage, we are unable to discuss any further details. As importantly, JET has been proactively working on multiple revenue enhancements and cost-cutting measures, which have been delivering results. This is evident from the fact that we are on track with our promise of a 12 to 15 percent reduction in non-fuel cask, which we made last year. As announced yesterday, this roughly translates to a delivery of about 2,000 Indian rupee crores of cost reduction over the next two years. The cost reduction program covers various facets of the company's operations, including maintenance costs, selling and distribution costs, fuel rate and optimization, debt and interest cost reduction, and enhancement of crew and manpower productivity. We also aim to deliver a 3 to 4 percent growth in RASC, or unit revenue, through strategic and tactical initiatives around network, pricing, inventory management, and sales. In line with our long-stated fleet simplification strategy, we are in the process of leasing out some of our excess ATRs to a regional carrier in India. We expect to lease out three aircraft starting with the upcoming winter schedule. Etihad, which is our strategic partner, is committed to our strong and ever-growing relationship and stands firmly with us as we explore and leverage the opportunities presented by the growing Indian aviation market. Uh, now let's come to the results for the first quarter of FY19. During Q1 of FY19, the capacity deployed in terms of uh, available seat kilometers or ASKs increased by 9.4% over the same period last year to 15.3 billion ASKs. We recorded 3.9% traffic growth in this quarter with the number of passengers carried increasing to 7.38 million over the same period last year. We reported a unit revenue or RASC of Indian rupees, 4 rupees and 10 paise for quarter one FY19, which is 3.9% lower than quarter one FY18. Fuel prices have seen a sharp increase with the Brent price being higher by about 36% at USD $72 per barrel in Q1 FY19 compared to $53 per barrel in the same period last year. As a result, the fuel cask in Q1 FY19 was about 37% higher as compared to Q1 FY18. This led to our overall cask increasing to 4 rupees and 77 paise in Q1 FY19 as compared to 4 rupees and 39 paise in Q1 FY18. However, I am happy to inform you all that our cask excluding fuel was down by 1.5% to 3 rupees and 17 paise against 3 rupees and 22 paise in Q1 FY18. This quarter, we reported a loss of 1,326 crores at a consolidated level. Amit and Ravi will be taking you through the results in detail later during the call. We commenced operations under the Regional Connectivity Scheme from the 14th June 2018 connecting Allahabad with Lucknow, Patna, Nagpur, and Indore, and Nashik to Delhi. We are seeing an encouraging response to these services. In line with our Win in India strategy, effective the 1st of August of this year, we commenced 30 additional domestic frequencies, including a few new city pairs, um, connecting metro cities to emerging cities, like Bengaluru to Guwahati, and Indore to Hyderabad and Chandigarh. On the international side, we introduced a second frequency on the Delhi-Dhaka sector, which will operate four days a week. We also plan to start a Mumbai-Manchester direct service, which will operate five days a week. With this new service, we will become the largest carrier between Mumbai and the UK, as we already operate three daily flights between Mumbai and London and a daily frequency between Delhi and London. 
In our constant effort to provide the best possible connections to the guests, we have enhanced our code share partnerships with both Delta and Aeromexico to connect more cities within North America for a seamless travel experience for our guests. We are already seeing fuel efficiencies on our 737 MAX aircraft, along with very positive feedbacks from our guests about the overall flight experience on their 737 MAX. During this quarter, the airline's overall fleet utilization also went up by 3.7% to 12.98 hours on a year-over-year -year basis with a technical dispatch reliability of over 99.5%. Let me now request Amit to take you through the financial and operating highlights. Thanks, Vinay. Good afternoon, everyone. Let me talk through about the Jet Group's consolidated performance for the first fiscal quarter of 2019 vis-a-vis -vis first quarter fiscal of 2018. In the first quarter of fiscal 19, our total capacity, which includes domestic plus international, in terms of seat, grew by 4.1%, and the total passengers carried by the airline grew by 3.9% versus first quarter of fiscal 18. ASKM's available seat kilometer were up by 9.4% as compared to the same period last year. We achieved a seat factor of 80.4% in the first quarter of fiscal 19, marginally lower compared to fiscal quarter FI18. Consolidated gross revenues increased by 5.2% to 6,257 crores in the current quarter compared to 5,951 crores in the same quarter last year. Our constant efforts on improving the cargo side of the business has resulted in increase of 6% in tonnage carried in the first quarter of fiscal 19 over last year's same period and considerable increase in the cargo revenues as well. The total cost per ASKM increased by 38 paisa or 8.7 percent to rupees 4.77 in the current quarter vis-a-vis 4.39 in first quarter fiscal 18. This was due to the fuel cask increase by 43 paisa or 37 percent from rupees 1.17 to 1 rupees 60 paisa in the same period. We were able to further reduce our non-fuel cask like previous quarters from rupees 3.22 in fiscal first quarter FI 18 to 3 rupees 17 paisa in first quarter fiscal 19. This was attributable to cost saving measures which have been undertaken in order to control non fuel cask. As Vinay alluded to earlier, our focus continues to reduce the non fuel cask. We are on track to achieve the 12 to 15 percent reduction in non fuel cask in the coming six to eight quarters. EBITDA for the quarter was 52 crores as compared to 870 crores in first quarter fiscal 18. The quarter's results were adversely impacted by increase in fuel prices without having a corresponding increase in the yields. The rise in Brent prices had a negative impact of more than 600 crores in the current quarter. Further, the quarter was also impacted by mark-to-market non-cash charge to the income statement on account of unrealized foreign currency loss of 344 crores. Interest costs went up due to increase in LIBOR and other domestic benchmark rates and higher utilization of CC limits. Further, as a portion of aircraft and other foreign currency debt is repaid and replaced by INR debt, this results in higher interest cost. Our focus efforts in optimizing selling and distribution cost, we have been able to restructure our incentive, commission, and distribution channels, which have resulted in lower selling and distribution cost in the quarter. We expect this to continue going forward. Other expenses shown an increase of about 550 crores, of which 364 crores was on account of foreign exchange fluctuation. Continuing on the operational highlights, first about the domestic operations, the share of domestic revenues to total revenues accounted for 46.4% for the quarter. ASKMs were up by 9% as compared to Q1 of last year. Passengers carried 
increased from 5.09 million in first fiscal quarter 18 to 5.38 million in first quarter of fiscal 19, an increase of 5.8%. Gross revenue increased by 0.8% to 2,901 crores in the current quarter from 2,877 crores in the same quarter last year. Let me talk about the international segment. International revenues account for 53.6% of the total revenues for the quarter. ASKMs increased by 9.7% compared to Q1 of last year. Passenger increased, uh, passenger carried were 2 million in first quarter a slight reduction from 2.01 million in first quarter fiscal 18. The passenger revenue from international operation increased by 5.2% to 2,803 crores in the current quarter. The overall seat factor in the international market was at 79.5%. Let me now talk about the debt and liquidity position for the jet fuel. As on 30 June 2018, the gross debt on our balance sheet stood at 8,620 crores or roughly $1.26 billion. Of this aircraft debt stands at 1,968 crores. Approximately 65% of the total debt is denominated in US dollar. The net debt of the company as of 30 June stood at 7,364 crores, a reduction of about 718 crores over March 2018. This was despite depreciation of the Indian rupee in the current quarter. It is important to note that over the last few years, we have been able to reduce our net debt by 3,500 crores. While our net debt has consistently gone down, we have in the past been able to refinance portion of our debt at regular intervals. Refinancing is a continuous process as we optimize our cash flows and financing cost. During this quarter, we were able to tap liquidity in excess of over $300 million to ensure that we meet our operational and debt repayment obligations. Now, turning to the current quarter and the outlook which we see, the aviation market in India continue to be challenging despite unprecedented growth in passenger numbers in the last few years with sales showing little signs of improvement and fuel continuing to be at current levels. As we enter the seasonally weak quarter, weakest quarter of the year, our focus remains on building base loads. The Jet Airways management team is resolutely focused on executing many key initiatives that will allow us to build a healthy and a durable enterprise. Let me now open the call to questions. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may please press star, then one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star, then two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask a question, please press star, then one. The first question is from the line of Ashish Shah from IDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, sir. Uh, sir, first question is is on the uh, debt uh, part, which you mentioned that uh, we have, uh, from March to now, we have reduced the debt by about 700 crores. So uh, how, uh, could you just explain how we have managed to do that? Because the operational numbers do not seem to suggest that we would have generated that sort of cash surplus. So it would be helpful if you can explain that as well as the 300 million uh, additional liquidity that you uh, briefly spoke about. If you can just elaborate on that, sir. That's my first question. Yeah. So as mentioned that we have got the $300 million liquidity, which includes certain lease incentives which we have taken, and a portion is the debt which we have borrowed from the Indian banks. So that lease incentive has helped us to reduce the debt on the balance sheet. Right. Sir, uh, but, you know, if you borrowed more debt, wouldn't that uh, then uh, also reflect in your overall debt numbers? So I'm just wondering how we have managed to reduce the debt numbers. Yeah. So as I mentioned, Ashish, it is the lease incentive which we have got, which is not a debt. It is an incentive. 
and that has helped us to reduce the debt. Okay, how much would that be, sir? Uh, the lease incentive? No, I <coughs> would not be able to disclose that number. Okay, uh, fine. So, second, uh, you know, in terms of the uh, maintenance cost, uh, we we are seeing that there has again been, uh, you know, a substantial increase, about 20% increases there for, on a year-on-year -year basis. So, if you can, uh, so generally, you know, we've been expecting the maintenance cost to actually come down, but, uh, you know, can you explain this sort of an increase and that also how will this pan out in future? So, if you look at it, the maintenance cost is directly related to the number of block hours which we have in the year and the number of flying hours. So if you see compared to last year to this year, we have got seven more 737s which we have got in our fleet. That clearly is one item which increases the cost. Second thing, because just the fleet growth. As far as the big reduction in our maintenance cost, as we have talked through, one big negotiation which is going to be implemented from 1st of January 2019 is going to be impacting our maintenance cost by over 650 crores starting 1st January 2019. Certain other negotiations which we are completing would also give a benefit in this year of maintenance cost to the tune of 350-370 crores. Sure, sir. Thank you. I'll come back in the queue for more questions. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Suraj Chera from IIFL. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, good afternoon, sir. This is Joseph from IFL. Uh, my question is in relation to the uh, lease incentive you just talked about. So, is it some kind of an income that you have received sitting on the balance sheet, gave you, you know, surplus cash and uh, something that will be, you know, uh, recognized in the PNL in the form of deferred income or something? Uh, can you please elaborate on the nature of this uh, lease incentive? Fine, thanks. This is Ravi here. As you would know, um, going by the accounting uh, uh, concept, these incentives are spread over a period of time, and obviously they will be accrued over the period of the lease. So it's the cash flow that uh, Amit explained which helped us to reduce the debt, but insofar as the accounting impact is concerned, it is spread over the lease period and will be accrued gradually over the years. So this will result in um, lower re lease rentals in future because uh, this income would be netted off against the total uh, lease rentals that you pay, is that right? Yeah, the accounting treatment will be appropriately done in the financials uh, as uh, it would be appro appropriate to be doing so. Okay. The uh, second question that I had was, would you be able to share your overall passenger revenues? I know you stopped giving the uh, passenger revenue split into domestic and uh, international, but would you be able to give the overall passenger revenues for the quarter? Overall passenger revenue is equal to total passenger revenue plus uh, five thousand crores. Okay, and so the last question that I had was, uh, could you give us a sense of the number of uh, aircraft that is owned by you? 16 aircraft we own. 16, and uh, these are largely uh, white bodies? Yes, as we have talked about, these are the white bodies, typically the 10 triple sevens, the 3 330s, and the balance 737s. Okay, sir, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Archil Kumar from HSBC. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, <clears throat> thanks. Uh, I had two questions actually. One, if you could please elaborate more on your plan uh, to increase your RASC by 3 to 4 percent, how would that come uh, given that, um, you know, the, the you, you have just said the industry, I mean, there is intense competition and the fares are low. So how are you planning to do that? Secondly, on the cost side, I mean, if I, if I, um, if I see um, your X fuel um, operating cost. I mean, 30 30 percent of your ex fuel operating costs are sort of U.S. dollar denominated, and uh, and since you talked about 12 to 15 percent cost cut targets, since since then. The
the USD has already inflated by almost 10% against rupee. So that means your cost cut target should have, uh, I mean, should, should um, need a redefined re re target. I mean, so how, I mean, so, so how, how that is sort of, um, you know, um, um, so, so if you could please uh, define on that. Thanks. Achal, hi, this is Vinay. I'll take uh, very briefly the yeah, first yeah, question. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, as you can imagine, um, when you're talking about revenue improvements, a lot of this is commercially sensitive, so I can't give you details. I will say, though, that there are three primary drivers where we've got enough leverage when we focus on just internal jet airways controllable decision-making in the areas of the network structure, in the areas of pricing and inventory management, and selling and distribution. Um, so that alone will give us uh, the kind of leverage that we need to improve our RASC numbers um, in the future. And, and Amit? Yeah, on Achal, on the CASC, you know, it is very clear that we have identified the various line items, especially there are three line items which we told you earlier as well, is on the maintenance, where we have already negotiated the contract the other line item is clearly on the S&D, where we are working with the various GDS providers and other providers, commissions, agency. This we are doing it. So this is the second big line item. And there is also the cost, which we are working on the fuel optimization that helps us. So these are the big ticket items. Obviously, the currency has played a role, but our endeavor is still to find ways and means to offset a portion of the currency depreciation and achieve, right. the, and then, sorry. Sorry. And achieve the target of the 12 to 15 percent non-fuel cost reduction. And, and, and that is despite the fact that, uh, as I questioned previously, uh, the lease cost um, will rise given that you are uh, you're buying um, or you're taking um, these fancy machines on lease now, right, 7, 3, 9 maxes, which are, which are quite expensive. Yeah. So, as I said, this we knew that we are taking the 737 MAX, which is a fuel-efficient aircraft, and with the, automatically the capacity of these aircraft are higher compared to the 737 NGs. We believe in absolute numbers. It will go up, but on a unit cost basis, we are confident of achieving the non-fuel cost reduction of 12 to 15%. Okay, thanks. So, sorry, the last question I, I, I had about the international operations, of course, now we can see that um, you are sort of uh, trying to strengthen your Amsterdam base. So, how is that spanning out, um, so, so balancing out between the Gulf and Amsterdam now, how, how that is helping um, um, Jet Airways? It's, uh, Amsterdam uh, and Paris uh, and London are working extremely well, um, but let's not take anything away from the connectivity we have in the Gulf. As we've said before, um, we pride ourselves in offering multiple alternatives and perhaps the broadest network available out of India to our guests, um, and it's panning out extremely well for us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ronel Dalal from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Hi. Uh, so my question is that uh, why have passenger load factors come down year on year to 80% since, uh, you know, passenger growth has been around 5.8% and ASK growth also is just around 10%. So are we not able to compete? And if that's the thing, then uh, the 225 aircraft order, uh, would there be any sort of cutback in that order or uh, how, how, what, how do you think about that going ahead? Yeah, so uh, no such uh, thing. Um, our 225 order is firm. Our 8 to 10 percent CAGR that we've talked about um, is firm. Uh, no such thing. As you know, there is a delicate market balance between load and inventory um, that airlines play around with periodically. Uh, so please don't read anything, uh, um, any, anything any further into a slight reduction in loads. Okay. Uh what about, uh, would you be able to give me your accounts table year on year? Okay. Account. Can you repeat that, please? The account table? Account. I mean, we will not be able to share that uh, 
on a six monthly basis we uh, published the balance sheet uh, and that is the time at which you would have the account payable numbers right uh, and the la last one was that uh, uh, could you give me the breakup of I, i didn't get that number on the cargo and also ancillary if you can give me any insight into the numbers so as i as i have told that the cargo for us is doing very very well we have crossed the cargo and ancillaries of almost 15% of our total revenue comes between cargo and other revenues and i would not go and split the cargo and ancillary revenue separately okay sure okay thanks a lot thank you the next question is from the line of anshuman deep from icsc securities please go ahead yeah thanks for the opportunity i wanted to ask about the 16 aircrafts that we own so uh, in terms of if you want to do a sale and lease back of those uh, aircraft uh, what is the tentative amount which we can get and are these all hypothecated in the sense that uh, can we do a sale and lease back if we want to yeah so hi anshuman uh, so good uh, very good point as you know these 16 aircraft are the 777s and the 330s which we own and the market value of these aircraft are phenomenally high today if i take even on a conservative basis this would be not less than 750 to 800 million dollars and the debt outstanding as i mentioned about that 1900 crores is roughly 280 million dollars so clearly there is a large equity sitting there yes these aircraft are pledged in favor of the exim back and eca back to banks and uh, obviously since considering that kind of an equity sitting in these aircraft we have clearly identified on our balance sheet if you recall on the march that these are the assets held for sale so we have a clear intent of doing a portion of this fleet on a sale and lease back okay uh, that that is uh, helpful that is helpful and sir uh, another question regarding our uh, jet privilege uh, program Uh, so obviously we have now 8.5 million uh, subscribers to jppl and um, there is a lot of uh, as you rightly said that uh, you this is one of the plans of monetization so would you be able to share any further color on that uh, in case you can share it would be great no sir as you know jppl is a very integral part of jet airways business and we have grown this business rapidly on a 20% year on year growth when we hyped up this business from a 2.5 million membership to 8.5 and, and globally these programs are very very valuable and we have got this mandate as you would know yesterday based on the board's decision that we will go out and monetize the stake in jppl now what percentage what quantum that will be all discussed over a period of time and as and when something gets finalized we will come back to all of you to explain the transaction structure right so last question from my side is like uh, <clears throat> there's a line mentioned in your release that uh, you're also looking to uh, streamline your 737 fleet so uh, in the domestic are we uh, what kind of streamlining are we trying to can there be a possibility of removing the uh, the, the business class or that kind of an arrangement to increase the delivery increase the number of seats or etc hello Um, excuse me this is the operator participants please stay connected while we check the management's line the line has dropped
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for patiently waiting. The line for the management is reconnected. So you may go ahead. We still have the question for um, for Mr. Anshuman Dev on the line. Yes. Uh, so I was asking about the uh, plan to re streamline the 737 fleet. Uh, one of those streamlining ha happened in 2013-14. And now when we say that, so what is it in the sense the domestic, are we planning to remove the business class or anything like that? Uh, no, uh, Ashuman, basically what we are saying is with the induction of the 737 MAX, you are having one unified configuration, simple configuration, standard configuration of the 12162, which enables us to have the aircraft movement significantly easier and does not create any complication. So that is one big thing what we feel that we will be achieving by getting these 225 aircraft over a period of time. Okay. Uh, sir, just, just, sorry, sorry uh, Anshuman, just, just to add maybe just a little more color, uh, it takes away some of the sub-fleet complexity we have in our 737s uh, today. So we've got 700s, 800s, 900s, um, and that we'll move, as Amit said, just to a very standard configuration. Right, right. And sir, one la last question about the Forex liability. Apart from the USD debt that we have, uh, what is the other... Uh, uh, is there any other uh, for you, you, uh, forex liability uh, in our balance sheet? No, nothing material because, you know, we have uh, the creditors, some of the creditors which you have on the new normal course of transaction. That's all the, that is all what it is, nothing more. Okay. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Costa Bubna from Rare Enterprises. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, so we understand, you know, that you're trying to improve your internal efficiency and reduce your costs. But when are we going to address the main elephant in the room, which is, you know, the revenue component, the pricing? And uh, when, when do you see the self-destructive competition coming to an end? Who is going to, you know, take the leap and raise prices first? So could you just explain on this context, please? Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, Kostub. You're not going to get me to comment on your last... Uh, question just because uh, that would be anti-competitive, uh, but I can certainly tell you that um, when it comes to our revenue strategy, there's plenty of leverage that we have just now in decision-making around the way we manage our own fare structures, the way we manage our own inventory, the way we develop uh, our network, uh, and the way we sell and provide incentives to other people to sell. So there's plenty there for us to do on our own. Um, that is uh, uh, what uh, we are focused on, and that's where we'll get the RASC improvement that we have talked about. I, I appreciate that, but then why isn't this, you know, showing in your revenue as of now? Why isn't whatever you're talking about showing in your revenue component? Why is it? It should be showing right. It should be showing now if you guys are working on, you know, this revenue leverage, but it isn't showing now, so why is that? Yeah, uh, Kastav, if you look at our performance um, in the previous fiscal year, we had an increase in year-over-year -year RASC. As I said, please don't read too much into a single quarter's RASC performance. Um, this is something that, uh, that we have uh, plenty of leverage and improvement to go on. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Akash Zaveri from Investment Trust of India. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thanks for taking my question. Uh, this is actually just continuing on the, le uh, the yield question which was asked previously. Uh, so, you know, uh, we've mentioned 3 to 5 percent drastic increase, but could you give us a time frame? Is that, you know, something you're seeing within this fiscal itself uh, next quarter? And uh, within, you know, part of that, you know, one of the concerns we've seen is a 0 to 15 day bucket is what some competitors are saying is the problem. Uh, so is there any improvement there and, uh, you know, anything which has happened, say, for the past, for, you know, the two, two months of this quarter that has gone by, which you can, you know, help us understand? Um, so this is not something, so on the cost side, we've provided, you know, a particular time frame. On the revenue side, uh, I will say the, the RASC improvement that we have provided is not a six to eight quarter phenomena. It is something that's much shorter. Uh, but we're not, uh, we're not willing to give you a, sort of a monthly uh, guidance on that or an individual quarter guidance on that, just to say that there's a lot of leverage that we still have based on our own individual and internal decision-making. Sure, thanks. Yeah. 
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashish Shah from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, my question is on the lease incentive. You know, is it is my understanding correct that around 300 million is what we generated from lease investment, the lease incentives? No. So as I said, this 300 million dollar includes both bank borrowings as well as the lease incentive. So as we mentioned, we will not be able to disclose the number of the lease incentive, but there is a substantial portion of this is a lease incentive. So uh, is this lease incentive only related to the current quarter sales lease back or is it also for the future uh, sales, uh, sale lease back that we are planning to do? It is for a uh, future sales as well. Okay, okay. So my second question is on the yield side. Uh, sir, we have seen some pressure on the yield. Is it related to the international market or, you know, we are facing uh, 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 yield pressures both on domestic as well as international? So clearly domestic is facing a larger pressure. However, the international also is facing a similar pressure. But domestic is clearly much bigger pressure. Hmm. And uh, sir, uh, you know, some of the competitors have said that the pressure is in the 0 to 15 bu uh, days bucket for the domestic side. In the international side also, is it the same phenomena or are we seeing some different trend? Like the, the booking windows internationally tend to be very different uh, from domestically certainly, but also different from region to region. So there's no such generalization that can be made. Hmm. And and uh, and the yield pressure is it by the same competition on the domestic as well as the international route, or you know there are different market players, you know, creating pressure on the yield. It's the uh, the markets are very different. Okay. okay, fair enough. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mayur Milak from India Navy Securities. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Uh, so. Uh, on the lease first, so what we are really saying is, uh, just uh, help me understand. So we are saying that we have received the money in advance, uh, which we will be using for our operating performance uh, cash flows, uh, but we will be accounting for them in the time to come, maybe another quarter or two quarters or four quarters. Until then, it will be sitting in the balance sheet. Is it right? Correct. All right. And secondly, I also wanted to understand, so I was just going through the maintenance cost per ASK. So while quarter on quarter, uh, so last quarter your your number stood at about, uh, about 43 paisa and it has, in this quarter again we see it as 44 paisa per ASK. But in the last three quarters it had come down to about 34 paisa, 35 paisa and then again shot back. So is it because of the uh, dollar depreciation or is there any other reason for that? So it has the combination of dollar depreciation and as you know that these contracts carry an annual escalation. So if you combine the two, it gives this increase. Okay, so in going forward, should we expect uh, the 44 paisa rented kind of thing to continue? Till, till your uh, new new maintenance uh, from uh, 1st January really comes in place? Correct. You can consider that. All right. That should be all. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bhavan Kumar from Crystal. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Thank you for having, uh, having my question. So I have two questions. My first question is regarding your maintenance expenses again. So if you see on a year-on-year -year basis, your maintenance expenses have went up. So uh, earlier, I think you mentioned that uh, you are having this 18% taxation on your uh, maintenance expense. So has it been corrected or uh, is, it the reason, uh, is it one of the reasons that you are seeing this kind of escalation in your uh, this one, cost? Now, the, uh, if you refer to our uh, note to the financials, which talks about the uh, appeal that we are currently pursuing, uh, it is contained in note number eight. So all the, uh, uh, the customs duty and the other GST, which has been paid on the repair activities, are continued to be pursued as an appeal to the government and do not form part of the expenditure line item here. Okay. So my second question is also regarding this uh, taxation on ATS. Sir. So actually, recently we have seen that you know there has been some news article saying that there has been a you know that uh, ATS is planned to be brought in the GST and all that. 
So, uh, the, uh, are you currently, you know, uh, uh, how are you currently utilizing the VAT that is being paid on ATS? Is it being utilized in some other states or is it currently highly unutilized? See, today ATF is still not covered within the ambit of GST. It is the state sales tax which is levied on the GST, on the uh, fuel price. So it becomes uh, part of the cost as of now. There is no credit mechanism available as of date. Okay, so earlier there used to be some VAT credits and VAT offset used to happen, right? That's why I was asking this question. No, no. There is no uh, change in the credit mechanism. It, it continues to be uh, forming part of the cost. Okay, okay. Sure, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Darshan Shah from Multi Act. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I have just one question, uh, which is uh, ideally the, uh, your ticket prices should be higher than the low, uh, low cost carriers owing to a full service carrier positioning. However, it seems that you are pricing on some routes even below low-cost carriers, which is leading to industry-level yield pressures. Uh, do you think we would be rather better off maybe rationalizing capacity on some routes rather than uh, enter into a price war uh, with a cost disadvantage? Thanks. So, so uh, Darshan, I would just say that, look, we have a – we are price competitive um, in places where we need to be price competitive. Um, I don't think uh, price wars are beneficial for anyone, but certainly the market has an appetite to be able to absorb a fairly substantial uh, growth in capacity. So I don't think that uh, that is something that we need to be worried about. And very clear, we are not in this game of bringing down the prices. If you look at it, we have been consistently enjoying a RASC premium over so many years compared to all the LCC players and everything, more than 15 plus percent, 20 percent. So in that range of 15 to 20 percent, we enjoy a healthy premium. So therefore, it is absolutely not correct to say that we want to bring down the price. It is in our interest to the prices are higher. Yeah, but sir, the, uh, the premium that we are getting uh, in the last uh, two quarters is uh, low as compared to what we used to get earlier. That's why it is leading to uh, that's a question. Mm. It's that's the impact of stage length. Yeah, that's not true. Okay. Uh, Mr. Shah, do you have any further questions? Uh, no. no, thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashish Shah from IDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks again. Uh, sir, the question is on the new aircraft, the 737 MAX, which you've inducted. Uh, what has been the experience so far? And, you know, uh, you know, what we have seen in case of some of your competitors is that they've had a tough time with their engines and things. whether we've had uh, any such teething troubles to begin with. Um, no, Ashish, we've seen nothing of the like. In fact, uh, the customer experience has been absolutely overwhelming, um, and the operating results, uh, in particular as it was sold to us in terms of the fuel burn efficiency, has come in um, you know, at par or even just a, a bit better than the way it was marketed. So we're very, very happy with it, both operationally uh, as well as uh, the feedback we're getting from our customers. This is it's a fantastic aircraft. And fuel efficiency clearly yeah. more than 15 to 18% compared to the previous fleet, NG fleet yeah. we are getting, yeah. which, which is phenomenal. In today's fuel prices, I think this is the best thing which you can have. Yeah. So which engine are we using on our uh, aircraft and is this the same that uh, has been globally uh, used uh, for the MAX aircrafts? It's a Leap 1B. Right, and globally, are all the other uh, users also uh, going to be using the same engine? Uh, yes. Yes. Sure. Lastly, sir, uh, what would be the scheduled debt repayment this year? 22. So, uh, this is around the 2,200 crores. Okay. Uh, and, sir, in your assessment, you think that we should be able to meet this from the uh, internal accruals or lease incentives, or you think that you'll have to probably raise some sort of a, 
uh, a different capital to you know an equity or anything to uh, be able to meet this you know as we said we have embarked upon various initiatives which includes the monetization of our loyalty program mm-hmm. internal accruals through the cost reduction revenue enhancement initiative as well as the certain equity infusion so all this would help us in order to meet our obligations okay sure thank you thank you the next question is from the line of kostav bubna from rare enterprises please go ahead Yes, so as we move away from the lean season and enter October, November, December, which would ideally be the strongest season, how do we see the industry pricing environment changing? Could you please, you know, talk about that? You know, it's uh, custom. It's tough to it's tough to predict. I will tell you that given the mismatch we've got between fuel and fare, uh, it's only a matter of time. Uh, in any other aviation geographies around the world, through any periods in history. these things tend to catch up uh, and it's time here um you know the other factor is you know and particularly of benefit to jet is as you look at the uh, infrastructure constraints in some of the leading airports mumbai in particular where we've got a very large share of um you're just not getting the kind of capacity that you got you know one year ago and two years ago so um you know you you make the call i'll give you just these uh, these various factors to consider but like i said you know some of what we are focused on from a rask perspective um you know isn't sort of hoping for these factors to come in we're also working on things that we can do that are within our control and if 32 dollar fuel has gone to 76 dollar fuel there's no reason why the fares have will not so we also you know like just waiting for the fares to you know the pricing environment to improve so hopefully that happens soon yeah sure thank you Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. So we would like to thank all investors, analysts and participants on the call for taking interest in the performance of the company and to SBI Caps for hosting this call. Talk to you all in the next quarter. Thank you very much.